So today I'm gonna to answer the question, was it a mistake? Was sealing the underbelly of my RV a mistake? I mean, now that about a year has passed since I sealed it up, what are my thoughts? And do I have any regrets? Now we've got a beautiful fall day here today. You can see all the vibrant colors outside. I absolutely love this time of year, getting to see all the changes with the leaves and such. And I'd say we're right at about peak fall color this week. You can see all the leaves that have fallen down. I'd say probably only about a third to a quarter of the leaves have fallen down so far. So I got my work cut out for me getting all these blown. But anyway, like I was saying, the question that I'm going to answer today is, was it a mistake to seal up the underbelly here on my Jayco Pinnacle fifth wheel? And if you're wondering what I'm talking about, uh, almost about a year ago, I did a video here on YouTube talking about sealing the underbelly on my Jayco Pinnacle fifth wheel. And so I created a video discussing how I sealed my underbelly, but more importantly, why? And then of course, some of the benefits of it and such. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. Or if you need a refresher, I'll put a card up for it. But I've gotten a lot of really good feedback. And so I figured with you know the winter season just around the corner, it'd be a good time to kind of do a follow-up video and update everyone. Now, I also want to address two other points in today's video. And the first, is to clarify the overall concept or ideas behind sealing your underbelly, the objective essentially. You know, sometimes I, I make a video and I think I did a pretty good job explaining something, but then when I get some comments later on, I realize I didn't do such a great job or I wasn't ultra clear on some points. And I think that it's at least partly the case here on sealing the underbelly, you know, I could have done a better job. And so in today's video, I want to clarify some of the points and fix all that. Uh, then the second goal in today's video is I also want to interact with some of the comments from the previous video that I did a year ago. And uh, in particular, the ones that were opposed against sealing the underbelly. I mean, I didn't really do any statistical analysis on the comments that I got or anything like that. And I think the, the overwhelming majority of the comments were folks that agreed with me. But there were some folks that disagreed, and I should add very strongly disagreed with me. And so I'd like to follow up with some of those comments and hopefully share just another perspective. You know, it's just my own opinions in the end. I certainly don't know everything, but I would like to discuss why I think some folks may disagree so strongly with the idea of sealing your RV's underbelly. All right, so that is the basic outline for today's video. So first, let's go back to that initial question. The first one, was it a mistake to seal the underbelly here on my fifth wheel? And to answer that question, let me talk about some of the benefits that I've noticed firsthand over, let's say the last, really last year of use. And to get some context, I completed the sealing of the underbelly kind of right at the tail end of the summer season last year. And so really then it was the fall and winter months that I had the first opportunities to really see how it performed, you know, kind of the before and after. And then also to give context, you know, I keep my RV here at the barn when I'm not using it. And I do not winterize it in those colder months because, you know, a lot of times we're using it, we're still camping in the winter months. And so that would involve a lot of winterizing, de-winterizing, you know, flushing, all that good stuff. And then since, you know, temps only end up in the freezing territory really for a short time period, uh, I typically don't winterize my RVs. And so that means, you know, instead I'm leaving my RV plugged in and it's all powered up. And then on the nights where it does get below freezing, you know, or even the daytime for that matter, then I'm just running my gas furnace just a little bit as needed to kind of keep all the temps above freezing there. So I say all that is it gives me the opportunity to really see the differences, you know, since I'm keeping my RV basically ready to use year round. And here on my Jayco Pinnacle, it came with the BM Pro J Command system. If you're not familiar with it, basically it's a smart RV system and I actually really like it. I'll put a card up if you're interested in learning more about it. But one of the features of the BM Pro system is it allows you to put a wireless temperature sensor pretty much wherever you want. They connect through Bluetooth. And then those temperature sensors, they will show up in the interface, whether you're looking, of course, on the main tablet display inside the coach or on your, your smartphone. 
And so I placed a temperature sensor strategically in the underbelly in the main section of the frame here, just behind the I-beam. And that gives me the ability to pretty accurately monitor the temperature on the extremes of my underbelly, you know, where I'm concerned about it going below freezing, such as water lines. And my thinking is if, if I'm not taking temperature measurements in the really the most vulnerable section of my RV, then how do I know that the temps are where they, they should be? I mean, how would I know that my water lines, for example, aren't freezing, right? And so that's precisely why I put a temperature sensor there in the underbelly, and that way I can monitor and really accurately see where the temps are, you know, especially in the, the colder months there. So that being said, what I've noticed is if the, let's say the outside air temperature is going to be in the 20s overnight, right? And then inside, I'm gonna set my furnace, the gas furnace to, let's say 47 to 48 degrees. And then when I do that, the underbelly, the temperature sensor there in the underbelly, it ends up tracking closer to the 38 to 40 degree range. So again, inside I've got it set to 47 to 48. Outside temperature is, let's say in the 20s, it ends up tracking in the underbelly right around 38 to 40 degrees. And remember, I'm not living in my RV, it's just being stored. And so all I'm looking for is for that furnace to kick on just once in a while, you know, occasionally really to just force some more of that hot air into the underbelly and just keep it, you know, just above that, that freezing mark. And for me, I'm comfortable with about a six to eight degree differential above that 32 degree freeze mark. And so that's really my goal in the winter months. You know, I basically wanna keep the underbelly in the 38 to 40 degree range. And again, that's only when the temperatures outside drop below 32 degrees for, it's gotta be, you know, several hours at a time. And so my experience with having the underbelly sealed is now it stays much longer in that safe range, you know, in that 38 to 40 degree temperature range without the, the furnace here having to cycle on as, as frequently. I mean, the, you know, the furnace cycles on and off based on the temperature inside the RV, right? Because that's where the, the thermostat is. And again, I've got that set to about 47 to 48 degrees while it's in storage here. And so then the, the furnace here on the pinnacle, it's gonna be cycling on and off and it's got you know heat ducts, of course, here in the basement storage. You can see that trunk line there, but then it's got a separate trunk line, a lower one that runs pretty much the full length of the RV all the way to the back in the main frame section there. And it's got some cutouts as well on that main trunk line. So most of the hot air goes to the actual living space in the fifth wheel, but then it does have some cutouts that kind of spill over and bleed into the, the underbelly. And that's how it gets its hot air down there. Think of it almost like a, like a giant room underneath, just with a shorter ceiling. You know, it's all connected to the rest of the RV through different penetrations, plumbing, electrical penetrations and such. And so, you know, as the furnace is sucking air into the, the return or the inlet that's built onto the backside here of the furnace, then it's forcing out that hot air, that heated air, through all the supply ducts. And some of which, like I mentioned, are feeding the, the underbelly. So that's how the hot air gets to the underbelly. And really, I think most RVs are gonna share the same story pretty much, very similar at least, even in the case of a, a travel trailer. But imagine in this case, if the, if the underbelly was not sealed, and then all that hot air that's being forced into the underbelly from the furnace, it's gonna naturally want to escape into the world, right? The surrounding campsite or the storage area here in my case. And that's gonna all happen right at the joint here, right at the I-beam where the plastic corrugated panels kind of meet together there. Basically the whole perimeter of the underbelly. And the way mine came from the factory at least, there were massive gaps and cracks at that joint right there at the I-beam where the plastic corrugated panels come together and so i mean these are gaps and cracks that are big enough not just for air to escape whether it's hot air or cold air but these gaps and cracks are big enough really for rodents you know for bugs to crawl in and so i, I say all that as having the underbelly sealed now it really helps keep all that hot conditioned air from the furnace where we actually want it you know in the underbelly 
as opposed to us trying to heat our entire campsite or storage site around us. I mean, that just doesn't make sense to me. And I think it's a complete waste of energy. All right, so that is the first benefit that I've noticed. And it's especially true, I think, in the cooler months. You know, if you're like me and you use your RV still in those winter months, whether it's in storage or at a campsite, I think you're gonna find that not only are you gonna be more comfortable inside your RV if you're using it, but you're also gonna be using less energy, right? Less propane, because that hot air, it's staying longer in crucial points like the underbelly, for example. And of course, you don't have to worry about your lines freezing in there as well. So I've definitely noticed that comfort and really that peace of mind benefit up front of not having to worry about, hey, are your lines gonna be freezing? Second benefit I'll mention, and this is really what I just alluded to with the bugs or the rodents. You know, I remember, this was years back, but I remember staying at a very high-end RV restore, probably one of the nicest ones uh, years ago. And I remember at dusk seeing little mice, believe it or not, running between the, the campsites there. And I remember thinking, again, this was a very high-end RV resort, but I remember thinking, I sure hope they don't find a way to crawl into my rig. But you know, the fact of the matter is sometimes you can't control the environment where you're camping. I mean, here at my storage area, I don't have a, a problem with mice, or not yet at least. And I've got some you know, proactive measures, like you can see a bait station down there to, to catch them if they are around. And you know, really, it's pretty easy to keep them from coming into your house or RV. I mean, the key is you've got to make sure you don't have tiny cracks and crevices where they can fit into. And of course, if you know anything about mice, you know that they can fit into some of the smallest, the tiniest crevices. You know, even just uh, as an example, the crack where your door meets the door jam on your house. You know, maybe you've got a, a door where that, that seal, that weather stripping isn't quite as tight. And mice, they can, they can contort their bodies, you know, and kind of squeeze right through a, a tiny little crack there. And it's the same story on your RV. I mean, who wants mice, who wants rodents getting access to your RV, right? I mean, they can chew through wires and ducts. They can cause all kinds of uh, damage. And I've never experienced the wrath of, of mice uh, or rodents firsthand, but you know, certainly I've heard about those horror stories, and I'm sure you have too, where a mouse makes its home in someone's RV and then you know, causes thousands of dollars worth of damage. And so the second big reason to seal up your underbelly on your RV is so that you don't have to worry about all that. And I'm not talking about just rodents. It'll also keep the bugs out. You know, bugs, they can crawl real easily right into your underbelly. And remember, your underbelly is directly connected to your living space because you've got plumbing and electrical penetrations, you've got vents and so forth, right? And so that gives bugs a clear path into your RV's living space. And again, sometimes you can't control bugs at your campsite. I mean, I'll share another example. I recall staying at a, another a really nice, almost brand new RV resort this last summer, and they had ants all over the concrete pads at the campsites. I mean, it was kind of like an infestation of ants. And so, I mean, the last thing you want is to have an easy path where those ants can get right into your rig and you know, start munching on your snacks and such. So I really can't say enough about the benefits that I've noticed there. You know, not only the peace of mind when you're in situations like that, but then also you're not encountering those pests and nuisances inside your RV. All right, well, let me talk about a third benefit and this one's gonna be inside. And it's really more pronounced, I think, in the warmer months, you know, in the, the summer. And that has to do with when you're running one of your exhaust fans inside your RV, such as the one here in the, the bathroom. You know, let's say you turn it on while you're doing business here on the throne because whatever you're cooking, you don't want to share it with the rest of your party, right? And so you turn on the exhaust fan to pull out all that stinky air out of the bathroom and then push that air into the world at large, right? At your campsite. And so when you do that, if you're pushing the air out of your rig, then it means that you've got to be replacing and pulling that air, that fresh air from somewhere else. And typically that air is going to come from the path of least resistance, which for most RVs is going to be through the underbelly, especially if it's not sealed, right? And I mean, if your underbelly isn't sealed from below and you've got these gaps and cracks all the way around the perimeter, then it's only natural for that fresh air to wanna come through those 
cracks because remember your underbelly is connected to your living space through penetrations whether they're electrical plumbing penetrations or even here like at the risers on your steps you know that's a big one because that's connected for the furnace intake essentially and so that's all connected to your underbelly as well and you know if you don't believe me just try turning on your exhaust fan in your rv with all your doors and windows shut so shut everything first turn on your exhaust fan and just walk around your rv and feel where that fresh air is being sucked in and a lot of times you're going to find it at different penetrations like if you've got an island in your kitchen and you've got some penetrations for the plumbing and electrical you'll feel it right at the toe kick or if you've got a fifth wheel right you might feel it on your risers here at the steps at a decorative kind of register or grill because again that's where your furnace is getting the majority of its intake so one thing i've noticed after sealing my underbelly is now when i turn an exhaust fan on like the one in my bathroom then i can choose where that fresh air comes from you know i can open a, a window like this one here kind of adjacent to the bathroom and because i've pinched off the weak link so to speak that leaky underbelly now the the bulk of that fresh air comes from the window here that i open as opposed to coming from the underbelly now to be fair there are other you know leaky points on an rv such as uh, a slide room seal right that's probably the next biggest leakiest point there but i'd still i'd still rather be able to choose where that fresh air comes from from a window you know as opposed to having that air come from the underbelly by default and so that is another big benefit that i've noticed firsthand that you know i no longer feel leaky unconditioned air sneaking in at all those different weird places that i mentioned when i've got an exhaust fan running in my rv okay well those are really the the three main benefits i'd say that i've noticed after sealing up the underbelly here on my fifth wheel but let me dive into the really the second part of this video and and that is to to clarify and i'd say clear up some misconceptions and, and really folks this is my fault because i could have done a better job explaining some of the uh what i'll say nuances i guess in my last video so forgive me for that but the the first misconception that i want to address is and this is going to come in the form of a question are you when you seal your underbelly are you literally sealing the underbelly 100 percent you know almost like a balloon so that it's 100 percent airtight and the answer to that is a big no let me repeat myself that's a big no i mean yes i did seal up all the way around the perimeter as you probably saw in the, the last video i did i sealed up you know all the way around that corrugated plastic that runs the full length of the rv against that i-beam and i did all the penetrations you know where the hydraulic lines are or the different wires that kind of enter and exit right but there's still some leakage given the the flexing of that corrugated plastic and then maybe some certain areas where you just can't get a great seal and i'm actually okay with this I think of it like the difference between leaving your door all the way wide open right and then just cracked a little bit so before i sealed my underbelly it was almost like i had the the door you know wide open right and then after i sealed the underbelly it's like the door was just barely cracked and so that's kind of a good analogy the way i think of sealing up your underbelly and so the related questions and comments i got about specifically am i isolating the underbelly to the point where it's a almost like a separate closed off room or area of sorts meaning that you know it's so sealed up the underbelly is so sealed up that condensation could result in the underbelly and then that could lead of course to bigger problems like mildew or or mold issues even and so i really need to clarify and call out that the answer to that question is no a big no my underbelly is not sealed to that degree where there's no airflow whatsoever anymore in fact i'll just mention this is something that i was not clear on my previous video that on my corrugated plastic the way it actually came from the factory from jaco I noticed these small little holes, about an eighth inch to a quarter inch in diameter, so really tiny holes, but almost like someone poked a hole every so often across the, the entire field there of the corrugated plastic. 
And I just assumed that that was by intention of the vendor that originally supplied the, the uh, corrugated plastic to Jayco in this case. But after interacting with some of the comments from my original video, I'm not so sure that all corrugated plastic comes like that. You know, it's possible that maybe some RV brands use a corrugated plastic that's sourced differently, that doesn't have those tiny little holes throughout the field, kind of along the center. But mine did come that way. And whether that was by intention or by some kind of mishap in manufacturing, I think it's a good idea to leave those tiny holes. If not for any other reason, then, you know, if a leak of some kind occurs in your underbelly, then you, you almost want some tiny, and we'll just call it kind of weep holes, where the, the liquid, where the water can escape. And that way you can identify, number one, that you've got a leak to begin with, but also where it is. Because think about it, you've got, you know, water lines, you've got holding tanks, you've got uh, sewer valves, sewer lines, all that's in your underbelly. And, you know, I've never personally had leaks in my RVs that I've owned personally, right? But I've heard of plenty of folks who have encountered leaks. And so it's probably just a matter of time before I'll encounter one my, myself. So all that to say, I think it is important to have a provision in your underbelly so that if you do have a leak, that water, that liquid, it's not gonna be trapped and become just a, a swimming pool underneath. Now, let me pause for just a moment and talk about a related side point. And this is for those who are strongly opposed to air sealing the underbelly. You know, basically those who argue that you shouldn't seal your RV's underbelly, for the, the sake of really leak identification alone, getting a potential leak, right? So stop and think about this with me. This is kind of my, my thought press on, process on this, but we know that water is always going to run to the low point, right? Because of gravity. And so if you get a leak in your underbelly, that water is gonna run not to the perimeter, but it's gonna run to the middle of your underbelly because that is the lowest point for that water to run. So my thought process is that water is gonna run to the middle of your underbelly regardless of whether you've sealed up your underbelly because the, the sealing is really taking place along the perimeter here, the higher point of the underbelly. So again, if you're gonna get a leak, it really doesn't make a difference in the end whether your underbelly is sealed right on the perimeter or whether it's not sealed because that water is still gonna make its way into the middle, right? So I guess the point I'm trying to make is I don't think it has so much to do with sealing your under underbelly, right? Or not sealing it. I think it has more to do with, do you have a path for water to escape along the really the center, the low point of your underbelly here? And so again, that's just another reason why I think it's a good idea to have tiny little weep holes all along the center of your underbelly. And it can just be real small holes, almost like you took a, a pin, you know, and poked it into your underbelly. Just real small holes, just enough for water to escape in the event that you did have a leak. And again, mine came this way, so if you don't have this on your underbelly, I would go ahead and, and put tiny little holes regardless of whether you're sealing the underbelly. That way, if you do have a leak, that water running to the lowest point has a path to escape and you can clearly identify that you've got a leak. All right, so I hope that clears things up. I do apologize as I did not present that aspect so clearly in the uh, previous video that I did about a year ago. So thank you to all who commented there and helped me see that. But the, the second misconception that I wanna correct, it has to do with the overall envelope of your RV, you know, versus having a, a separate envelope of sorts where your underbelly is isolated by itself. And, and I've said it before, but your RV's underbelly, this goes for regardless of which brand RV you have, it's almost always directly connected to your RV's living space, believe it or not. I mean, think about the, the plumbing and electrical penetrations where there's these you know, big gaping holes that are made during production when your RV is being manufactured. You know, some of them are behind cabinetry, some of them are behind access panels where the air it basically can freely move and exchange between your underbelly and in living space. And we really don't notice this immediately, but think about uh, registers for your furnace, right? Those registers are connected directly to your living space and then indirectly as those same registers go to trunk lines that are feeding your underbelly. So there's a connection there too. And then if you've got a, a fifth wheel here, like I do with basement storage, and especially if you've got a drop frame, 
then you're gonna have huge openings between the underbelly and then the storage, your basement storage. And, and perhaps that all links back to your living space through, in my case, decorative grills on the, the stair risers. So again, in my opinion, you should absolutely not attempt to create an entirely separate envelope by completely isolating your underbelly from the living space. In other words, when I sealed up the underbelly here on my RV, I only did it from the outside, from underneath here. So I did not seal up all the penetrations that connect my living space to the underbelly. You know, those are existing penetrations that were made when the RV was built. And that could go for plumbing, electrical, access grills, you know, all that should be left as is. You don't want to seal those penetrations up. And the reason is if I completely seal up the underbelly from both the inside, you know, inside my living space and then outside here underneath the RV, then I've essentially created two completely separate envelopes of air. You know, I've got my underbelly on one side and then my living space on the other. And I don't personally think that's a great idea. You know, I think that could certainly lead to mildew and mold issues because then there's, there's really almost no airflow whatsoever going on in the underbelly if you seal it up completely like that. And, and that way there's no way for you know, condensation or moisture, if it ever got in there, there'd be no way for it to escape. And furthermore, if you're using the furnace in your RV, like I am here, to you know, push that hot air into your underbelly in the colder months to keep things from freezing, well, you've got to have an exchange of air between your, your furnace, the return air inlet, which is on the opposite side of the service panel, you know, connected to the basement storage, essentially. You've got to have a direct connection there so that air can exchange between the return inlet and the supply air coming out of the, the furnace. You know, if you seal off your underbelly completely and there's no air going in or out, then the furnace, it won't be able to push hot air into the underbelly to begin with. So all that to say, I could have done a better job explaining that in the original video that I did about a year ago. But basically when you're done sealing your RV's underbelly, you should be able to visualize, you know, one big envelope going around your entire RV where air can move around between the different zones, almost like little rooms. Because really that's what the underbelly is. It's like another room essentially that's connected to the rest. Okay, so those are the two big misconceptions that I wanted to clear up. So my mistake there, and again, the first one is if you're air sealing the underbelly on your RV, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you've got some weep holes running along the center of your corrugated plastic so that you've got an opportunity for water to kind of leak out if you ever did develop a leak inside. And then secondly, you wanna make sure that you only seal that underbelly from the outside here. You don't wanna go back inside your, your coach and start sealing up penetrations connecting your living space to the, the underbelly. Okay, so I hope that clears up things better. Now, last, I wanna interact with some of the comments from the previous video that were, you know, completely opposed to the idea of sealing up the, the underbelly on your RV. You know, like I said, most of the comments were folks that agreed mostly, but I always do appreciate hearing from the other side because I can often learn things that way and, you know, hear from the opposing viewpoints to get a, a better understanding of where they're coming from. And, uh, you know, I'll just confess, I certainly don't know all there is to know about this stuff. There's plenty of viewers out there that have way more experience on these matters than I do. And so even though I really like the idea of sealing the underbelly on your RV, I still appreciate hearing those opposing viewpoints. And so really the opposition that I got was really, uh, I'll group into two categories, I'll say. And that first category would be folks who said, hey, if you get uh, a leak, you know, and your underbelly is sealed up like that, you'll never know about it. And then that water's just gonna keep pooling till the, really the panels drop down underway, right? They can't hold it anymore. And suddenly you've got a, a flash flood at your campsite, right? And so again, I covered that in the last section, you know, that was completely my fault. I didn't address that 
very well in the original video. But like I've pointed out already, my underbelly came with those small weep holes scattered across the middle. And whether it was intentional, you know, by design or some kind of accident that happened in production, they are there. And so if yours doesn't have those, those little weep holes, as I'm calling them, I would recommend adding them. And, you know, I really think that goes for folks, whether you're planning on sealing your underbelly like I did or not. I mean, water is going to run to that, that lowest point, which is typically going to be the center of your underbelly and not the perimeter. So, I mean, I think you want those wheat poles there regardless, but in the end, I don't think it has a lot to do with sealing your underbelly. It really has to do with more having those wheat poles for water to get out regardless. Okay, so that was one objection I got. And again, I appreciate all who pointed that out. You know, you definitely want to have a clear path for any water to escape from your underbelly if it ever got in there. The second, and this is really the other main category of objections that I got, and this has to do with the, we'll call it the ease of servicing an RV that has a, a sealed underbelly. So I had some viewers comment that sealing your underbelly would create really basically a, a service nightmare of sorts. You know, if you ever had to have work done on your RV, you have to undo all that sealing to gain access to repair it. And I mean, I think that's a fair argument from, you know, from the factory, most RVs are gonna have that corrugated plastic kind of resting on the I-beam, like in my case, with some occasional lag screws that are holding it in place in the center. And so if you need to service anything underneath, you just undo those lag screws and then you pull the panel down to gain access. So think about the flip side, if you seal up your underbelly, as I've done in my case, then to get same access to that same endpoint, you're gonna to have to pull off all that zip tape or at least pull it off in the area that you're servicing and probably both sides. So that certainly could take a lot longer in terms of undoing and then reapplying that zip tape. So yeah, I think that's a fair point. So thank you to all who mentioned that. And I think a lot of the commenters that pointed out that fault you know mentioned that they themselves were rv techs currently or actually had worked as rv techs for many many years and so that was kind of their first objection to the uh the whole idea of sealing your your underbelly because again they're thinking right away of how much more difficult how much more time consuming it would be for them as a service tech in the rv if they were servicing your rv and it had a sealed underbelly like that so that's something I definitely did not think about in my original video. And so now that I've had the time to think it over, you know, think over that objection specifically and kind of consider the feedback from RV techs who, uh, who chimed in there, you know, I suppose my, my thoughts kind of where I'd land considering the serviceability aspect of a sealed RV underbelly, I would put them under two counterparts that I'd like to mention. First one is if you did need to service a particular area of your underbelly, you know, maybe it's a, a leaky valve or a, a slide motor perhaps, you know, something else that's relatively small that's kind of isolated to a specific area under your RV, then a solution would be just to cut an access door, an access panel. You can actually see that's what Jayco did from the factory here on my fifth wheel. You can see they cut this access door and I believe underneath here is the slide motor for this rack and pinion, uh, my super slide here, kind of the family room, living room side. And so Jayco put this kind of access panel in here where they cut three sides of the corrugated plastic and then they had just taped it, it shut originally, and I just went over it with the zip tape. But that way, if you need access to service the slide motor or some mechanism up in there, you just take off that tape and you instantly gain access then through that kind of door of sorts. So that's one strategy to consider. In fact, earlier in the video, I mentioned that I had a wireless temperature sensor hidden up here inside the underbelly. And so that temperature sensor is wireless. It runs on batteries which means that eventually I have to replace that battery. And for me, that sensor lasts about a year or so before I have to swap out the battery. And so in my case, that temperature sensor is right about here on the, the I-beam. And so you can see what I've actually done here is made myself a little access door. This one's only about six inches or so across, but by creating this access door, then I can real easily just take the three sides of the tape off and gain instant access into the underbelly to swap out 
fairly easily swap out that, that battery and the temperature sensor. So this is actually something that you can do yourself. I mean, if there's an area of your underbelly and you're concerned about gaining quick access to it, you know, maybe it's near a valve or a motor or something else, all you gotta do is take a, a sharp box cutter, you know, a razor, and just cut three sides of a rectangle. You don't wanna cut all four because that four side here in my case is kinda of like a hinge, a built-in hinge. And then also notice the way that I've made this cutout. So this is the front of the RV going this direction. And that is the side that you want your hinge to be on so that let's say this tape failed at some point or maybe you forgot to tape it all together. Then as you're going down the highway, you know, 65 miles per hour, that wind is coming across the underbelly and blowing that hatch closed as opposed to if the hinge was right here, it would want to flap open while you're driving. So basically you want that hinge to be the forward most uh, section or side of your RV. But again, this is something you could real easily do if there's an area where you need access to. It's real simple. And when you tape it up in the end, I mean, it's still sealing up that access door and it's not allowing critters or something to get in through that compartment. So anyway, I think that's a, a pretty easy solution to make servicing, you know, a sealed underbelly an easier proposition to swallow, you know, especially for, for RV techs thinking about that. And again, you could do this for valves on your holding tanks, you know, slide motors, really anywhere that you think you're going to need quick access. But uh, definitely let me know what you think about this idea, especially you service techs that are watching. I mean, would this solution address kind of most of your concerns or can you think of other ways that, that might even be more helpful? Definitely let us know in the comments below. All right, well, last point I wanted to make concerning the objections I got specifically on the on the serviceability side, you know, of a, of a sealed underbelly on your RV. It has to do with something that I've noticed in the RV industry. And, and that is, it seems like it's more common to find everyone from, you know, leadership in RV brands to the, uh, the production workers that are building them to the, the salespeople that are selling them at the dealers, right? And then to the service techs that are working on the RVs after the sale, right? It seems like it's more common that those same RV industry workers, they don't actually own RVs and use RVs themselves. Now, I realize that is a broad statement, a generalization, so I'm not saying that it's universally true across the board, but from my vantage point, it seems like that is more the norm. In other words, the, the same people that are designing and building and, and selling and servicing the RVs, they don't necessarily use the RVs themselves. They aren't RV customers, even though that they're you know immersed in the RV industry on a day-to-day -day basis as their employment, their job, they're not actually out using them recreationally as a customer like the rest of us. And so my point is that some of the objections raised in my previous video to sealing your RV's underbelly that have come from folks in the RV industry, it could be that they're not actual RV customers. And so they're not thinking about the kind of the end experience for us as customers in terms of a, a sealed RV underbelly enabling you to more, let's say more comfortably use your RV, whether you're in extreme cold or extreme heat, right? you know they're not thinking about that experience for us as rv owners with the goal to uh, keep rodents or bugs out you know perhaps their focus isn't necessarily the the end uh, let's say the end customer experience of enjoying that rv and and having the experience be as seamless right as possible and it's because they're not necessarily users of rvs themselves and so it's only natural for them to object to this idea, this concept of a sealed RV underbelly, given that it's gonna take more time or money to implement, especially if, if they're thinking in terms of the production floor, you know, and thinking about potentially making service on that same RV more time consuming later on. And so those sealing the underbelly may make for a better experience for us, for the end customer overall, it might also be cost prohibitive in some ways, such that you know the folks that are actually working in the RV industry, they aren't as receptive to this, this concept and idea of a, of a sealed underbelly. Well, I hope that makes sense. It's just a disconnect, I think, between the RV industry as a whole and the customer base themselves. And that's something that I think can change over time. And, and maybe even some kind of compromise could result in the end there. Well, anyway, those are the points that I wanted to make in today's video. Now, if you haven't seen the original video I did on sealing your RV's underbelly, definitely check that one out first. 
Either way, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Definitely let us know in the comments below. Just remember to keep it family friendly and always be respectful. As always, thanks for watching.